I don't have to welcome the horrible people because hopefully they stuck around because we are doing this at the end of the Dirty Jersey episode. So thank you, horrible people, for sticking around for our first horrible guest and definitely our worst guest so far. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think technically Ryan's just the longest running guest. That's true. He kind of dove onto the show on the second episode and wouldn't leave us alone. <laughs> So we Should have... we introduce who we're talking to? I, uh, look, is that our style? Give us a synopsis of who we're talking to, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, Filmmaker. <laughs> I did zero research, so as far as I know, a filmmaker of... That's all short, you need to know, dude. <laughs> short film, uh, Dirty Jersey, which you can watch on YouTube. I don't know if it's... See, like I said, I didn't do anything else, so I don't know where else you can get it, but I watched it on YouTube. So. Yeah, YouTube is, is the only place that's available right now. I'm working on Tubi. But it's got a hit of forty. Yeah, it's got to hit the forty-minute mark to qualify. I'm at like thirty-seven minutes, so uh, I might tinker around with a couple of things. Just slow those, slow that credit roll down. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Uh, uh, Maybe a little extra white rabbit stuff in the beginning. We'll see. Do you have that stuff, or I have a little bit of material, but I'm thinking about doing like a little animated sequence. I wanted to do that from the start, and it just turned out that. Uh, Making all the real stuff was easier, yeah. which is kind of ridiculous. But my only question, I guess, would be if you're adding something else on there, uh, where Devil Man? Where Devil Man? <laughs> you know, he's around. He was actually supposed to show up at the end, but but I cut that obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure making your own little uh, passion project like this, cutting anything and everything you shot was probably painful. It would have been painful for me. Be like, ah, but we, we did that. We did the work. Like, that was money, and yeah. now it's not here. I, mm. It definitely hurts. It definitely hurts. When did you start editing the film? Were you doing it while you were filming, or did you do it after you had finished? As soon as I came home from set every night, I synced up all the audio and then uh, fell into a coma. I was editing kind of as we went. I actually had the different scenes from the movie added it as I did them and kind of like pieced everything together. It wasn't originally like in the order, even that it plays out in the movie. So there's certain things I switched around here and there, but yeah, I edited all throughout production. It took two years to shoot. Oof. So wow. why? What all are you credited for doing on the movie? Oh boy. I directed it. I co-wrote it. I did a majority of the editing. I did a lot of the props because I imagine with like a like a low budget short, you probably have your everybody probably has all their hands and everything. Oh yeah, well yeah, I do. You know, by, being the by person necessity, like, paying yeah. for it. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So did you? How was this financed? Well, I did a crowdfunding campaign, and we made about sixty five hundred bucks. And then COVID hit, and uh, I used my um, what are they called? Did you use your stimulus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right on! Yeah. Right yeah. on! Yeah. Yeah. Yes! Like yes! Yeah, like, a, like a true artist. Thanks, Biden. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was stimulated. Oh, we should put a Biden sticker on the YouTube page. I did that. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> you know, it took two years to film, so I had plenty of time to, to kind of save my, save my pennies. A lot of it, I mean, I remember one day I wasn't sure how I was going to pay for everything, and a buddy of mine sent me like 500 bucks oh nice uh, i just like burst into tears dude <laughs> it, it was it was uh it was a long process a lot of a lot of panhandling a lot of my family helped out you know yeah helping with the food there's oh, just right. so you many feed these people. that you don't even oh yeah yeah it looks Especially way better than a lot of the it stuff should? we watch you're gonna say daniel <laughs> a lot of the stuff we watch <laughs> no let me tell you about this movie you've made the night scenes are so <laughs> The, like I have so many questions on how, to, like the the lighting. How much? How long does it take to light a night shot, and it doesn't look like shit? We showed up probably like four hours before the sunset, something like that, and it was a bitch to get all the equipment out into the pines. The actual way we went, it like went up this hill, and then there were train tracks, and then it went down this hill, and then there was probably a half mile of just sand of a road, and uh, I had to throw a generator on a little hand truck and pull that all the way back there, get that as far away from all the equipment as possible, put sound blankets on it, all that. And it helped. We did a lot of location scouting and stuff, so we kind of had an idea of where we wanted to put everything. Yeah, just like having gone out there ahead of time uh, really helped me communicate with the with the DP, Brian Keenan. Fantastic, 
cinematographer. And yeah, it, I mean, really what I realized all throughout making this movie was you just pay for quality. If, if, if you pay for it, it's going to be a lot better than if you don't pay for it. Yeah, Daniel. Mm. Yeah. No, it, it, it was a long <laughs> setup. All that to say, it was a long setup. Real quick, I got a question for Ryan Daniel. Did we ever actually say his name and tell them <laughs> who he was in classic Well, I did, the syno- I did the synopsis, so naturally not. Naturally not. So once again, we're talking about the thing without telling him exactly. I think we're actually ahead of schedule in terms of like where we would, where we would get to that in an episode. That's fair. That's fair. I'm seeing his actual name is David here. David Keane. The uh, mastermind behind Dirty Jersey and... The Keen, uh, we had to explain to Ryan, why, maybe and Daniel, what Peachy Keen meant. But they also, if I recall, wanted to know why Peachy Keen. I just Did you explain last it name. to me? But why Peachy? Why, what? It's I think a, my question was, why this particular fruit? It's, well, yeah. like, it's, it's like, like it's Gucci. Good. It's good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Now, I think it's funny that, you know, it's Peachy Keen it's pe- and everything is not okay. Everything's not okay. It's not all Peachy Keen. <laughs> now, I have a very important question, because I suspect Daniel lies to me all the time. Can you pump your own gas yes, in Jersey? Yes. Mm-mm, no, it is illegal. Why? What, what we is We Googled this, this during the thing. I know you did, They'll but you lie. Come out but we've never lived through you. it. I figured they would. You definitely can't pump your gas here. Do you just screw it up too much that you're not allowed to? Someone ruined it for everyone. Maybe. I mean, I'd have... One person's just using it to wash their car? You What's know what? The... It was that gas fright from Zoolander. No, the, oh. the gas pumper The gas pumper union is strong. Am I supposed to pull the lever before I put it in the car? Well, yeah. Well, some, some These are... of them don't even have the levers. Really? Yeah, like they say locked in. You just pick up the thing and it's ready to go. I'm not kidding. Yeah. What? Like where? Like most places around where we are where you pump your own gas... Be specific. Where do you live? I've never seen that. Where What's the address? Where no, I mean, like, I've been to other states. <laughs> <laughs> I've just never seen that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So you have you have some gas pumps where you lift up the, the nozzle and then you have to lift up the flap it's sitting on. But there's some where you just right. lift up the nozzle and it's good to go. You could put that in any hole. Yeah, 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 I guess you could put it in any hole. I mean, Jersey ain't the only place that can be dirty sometimes. True. Now, I actually did spend a little bit of time looking up Dirty Jersey on uh, Urban Dictionary before this. <laughs> Just see if it was a thing. I still have it. Really What'd you that, find? That good. <laughs> nothing well, funny. Nothing, oh, we can make it into a thing. Yeah, it, it could be all yours. I gotta think up a real gross <laughs> when sex you, act. When you I take want your it, I want it to involve teeth, teeth into your mouth. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's a, dirty jersey. It's, a, it's a dirty jersey, all right. Um, all you need is a jar and some pliers. <laughs> what were the fake teeth? Just stuff you bought online or? Uh... They were real fake teeth. Real fake teeth. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just went on Amazon and got into some dentist supplies. God, how is your uh, like suggestions for purchases on there looking these days after making this movie? <laughs> Uh, it, it's, it's pretty entertaining. That's great. No, the effects in this, they really were, like, phenomenal. I love that everything was practical. I love that little, uh, like, two-minute side video you did of showing all the fun and stuff happening on set. The head splitting open. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Who was in charge of your effects? Like, were, was that mostly you, or did you have a guy, or no, girl, no, 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 or... No, no, no. Okay. Uh, Rich, Rich Hill. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Honestly, I've been calling him the next Tom Savini for a long time. He's done like a, a little bit of, you know, indie features and stuff like that. But just having him for the price I had him for was an absolute steal. Don't tell him that. <laughs> well, but his work is phenomenal. Oh, it, it, I, I mean, it was like, he was pulling off the original estimate I got for that head rip uh, when I sent it out to a professional company was $10,000. <laughs> And uh, me and Rich ended up pulling that off for about 200 bucks. Oh, mm. damn. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you can do it again for Halloween. We actually did do it twice, like two separate days. The I don't know if you can really see it, but there's a shot at the end when she's flashing through all the trauma or whatever. That head rip is different than the head rip you see before. Ooh. I actually like the head rip in that scene a little bit more because the face pulls apart in a cool way. but. It wasn't an effect you could do again. It was like a you got once or twice to get it, and the second time doesn't look very good. And otherwise, you just got to get everybody back at that same spot another day. No, that was oh, that was really good. Again, when you uh, when you reach out to us, and I was like, okay, uh, I'll take a look at this. Obviously, we see a you know a bunch of 
little passion projects here and there, and you look at them, and it's like you're watching. It's like you're watching a, a soap opera. Like the lighting's bad, the frame rates they film in. It's just it, they're not using like the standard. It just all doesn't look or feel right. And I have a hard time getting past that a lot of times. But this, it, it felt cinematic. I mean, to you made a movie. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. You made a movie. Like that's. <laughs> I was I was so so glad. I feel like this isn't the first time he's worked on a film. That's what I was going to oh, ask. Is like, it? What's what's your history? Like, do you have any like education? I may have clicked on the link on IMDb. Oh, he spoiled it. Oh no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, because I because did <laughs> it makes it sound like I've been doing porn. No, but yeah. uh, he he's been a <laughs> terrible movie. He's been a DP really you... <laughs> assistant. <laughs> no, I no formal education. I did an online film school that was kind of just like a scam. They just like threw a curriculum at you mm-hmm. and charged you too much and you you did like little homework thing but they set you up with a professional in your area and in new jersey that doesn't get you very far my first movie i ever did was called fight valley and it was with i don't know if you guys are familiar with ufc it was tara reed cyborg oh no tara reed sorry i did do a movie with tara reed a couple years after that what the hell is her name misha tate she became the women's champion, like, not too long after we, we did that movie. But, yeah, they set you up with um, a mentor, so to speak, and you can kind of just go on to production sets with them. It, it was all kind of like a scam. I mean, I did end up getting some, some good contacts out of it by the end of everything. But, yeah, I just worked on a, three or four feature films, and then um, some of the people I met on those crews we were just like, these guys don't really know what they're doing, right? Like, we could probably <laughs> do this ourselves. And then we, that was like 2014. It'll probably be your reaction after you're done with us. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone could do yeah, this better, uh, right? <laughs> um, 30 jerseys took me six years to make altogether. So it, it's been a long, long, long process. And I actually had a completely separate script for it for a long time that I filmed. I filmed probably like 60% of it. It was the first time we shot, I tried to do it in like four days. And the fourth day absolutely fell apart. I got kicked out of two separate locations by cops. Oh, God. Uh, learned a lot about permits. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the movie, was, the movie was accurate. They or were at least a fake one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only, the only thing that was better the first time I shot, it was actually, it used to be called the Pine Barrens. First time we shot the Pine Barrens. Uh, we actually did film the quad stuff in the pine barrens which looked way cooler than what i I ended up doing (laughs) the stuff you see the the drone stuff in the movie is not the pine barrens there's actually only two or three scenes in the movie that actually happen in the pines Uh, a lot of it was filmed in va man where did you where did you find that bus train Because I'm wondering, did, did, did you find that and then write a script about it to incorporate it? Or it just happened to, you wrote uh, the we script the and then you found this location? When I, yeah, we were in the process of writing it when I, when I came across that. But uh, I saw it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I saw it on Twitter. I read that it was in Pennsylvania. That got my wheels turning. That was a really difficult location to, to figure out. You go online and look up that trolley graveyard. And I found out who was supposedly in charge of it, got not in contact with him, somebody else that told me that he was in the hospital or something in like a completely separate state. So he doesn't deal with it anymore. And then that guy, we eventually lost contact. He just stopped answering the phone. I got in contact with another guy that supposedly ran it. And he told me it was fine to just like come on out. I was like, we're shooting a movie in like a couple of months. Would I be able to come like check out the place? And he's like, call me in a couple of months. Like, all right. But uh, we weren't able to get in contact with him after that. It, it, it was about five hours away from where I'm located. So we took a, a trip out there without knowing uh, whether we were even going to be able to get on the site or not. It took us to like this weird little, um, it was just like a chop shop, it looked like. Nobody was around. There was just an RV somebody was living in with the door stood open. Oh, like, no, no, no. no, no, it was, <laughs> no. It was no, like no, super no. sketchy, dude. They got a shrine in there. Don't touch it. That's the sequel. I like called into it and nobody knocked on the door of the shop. Nobody answered. And me and this guy are standing there. We're like, uh, it was my assistant director, Tyler. We had just driven five hours. And we're like, fuck, man. Like, 
what uh, i guess we're just gonna like go home so we we sat around there for like another five minutes and this car rolls in behind us it was down this dirt road the guy basically gave us enough time to get into trouble and he rolled up on us and it was this dude with one of the biggest beards i've ever seen <laughs> a huge lip of tobacco in and he was smoking a black and mild at the same time <laughs> uh, <laughs> He had overalls on, and Yosemite Sam was stitched into them by hand. This dude was scary. <laughs> That's class. Right that sounds there. like our relatives. Basically, I mean. basically, he's like, "What the hell are you guys doing out here?" Uh, the, uh, the, but, but uh, I'm a filmmaker, um, and I really <laughs> would love to see this trolley yard that I've heard so much about. He's like, "Okay, I'll call Boom," and uh, it's right down the street. So he calls Boom, which is. Also, another terrifying individual <laughs> had about like three teeth. He was cool though. I mean, like he let us in, and that was that was that. We got to see the place after we'd seen it and everything. Cut to like two weeks before we're filming, and I can't get back in contact with Rick. <laughs> I'm calling him. He picked up the one time and kind of just like blew me off. It, it was really like another like call me when you're coming type deal, and it's tough to do that when you got to convince. 12 other people to drive five hours out to this spot right so it got to the day before and we were like weighing other options we looked at a couple other spots i thought i was gonna have to move the shoot day and i'm like you know what? uh I don't, I don't know that this guy texts at all he had a flip phone i'll just text him since he's not picking up and i i sent a message 200 bucks if i can get to the trolley yard tomorrow and he texted me right back, like, see you tomorrow. Uh, mo money speaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, money talks. He, spoke, money he started talks. speaking his language. The thing is, if he would just answer the phone, I would have offered him money on the phone. But I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get in contact. <laughs> right. And then, you know, on the way there, he wasn't picking up the phone. So that was another, like, you know, it, it was like, are we going to be able to get on? Like, everybody's on the way at that point. So that was a whole ordeal. That was actually the longest shoot. For me, anyway, I, I left the house at 4 a.m. that day and got back at 4 a.m. <laughs> the next day. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, yeah, I did the drive, the whole drive that day. We had got an Airbnb for every everybody that wanted to stay, you know, that didn't want to do the drive, but most of them ended up going back home. But you had to get back and dismantle him. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Two years. Wow. It sounds like you almost walked into your own little horror movie while trying to make your horror movie there, which, I mean, that that's your sequel right there, your meta horror film. You uh, <laughs> released a 45-minute long uh, behind-the-scenes thing where you end up getting murdered, and I'd watch that. That th that was uh, an idea <laughs> at one point. We are going to do David versus the Devil. Oh, there you um, go. Ooh, just boom. considering, like, <laughs> I, I've been... Yeah, right. <laughs> I've been working on it for so long, and there was just so many different iterations. So when you're writing... Mm. Are you writing with the budget in mind? Like, obviously, you can't have King Kong fight Godzilla in this. Right. So. I've never been a a write. Like, you know, I don't like to constrain myself while I'm writing. I'm kind of like, a, I'll figure that out uh -huh. at another point. Or like, you know, I think there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with miniatures. When you're doing it practical, there's a lot of different avenues you can take to to kind of trick people. For instance, like the cabin is three different locations. It's an Airbnb. The outside is a different location in a different state. And then the basement is my parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't really take into budgetary concerns into account until I'm trying to figure out how to do it, hmm. really. You know, for the feature I'm working on now, I have like a set location in mind. So I can write. I know that I have that location and then so I you can, can work, write with like, that in mind, yeah. Right, 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 right. Boom has another spot for him. <laughs> 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 Did your uh, parents appreciate the uh, gore laundry shoot in their basement? <laughs> They're used to stuff like that. <laughs> That's it's, cool. it's not the it's not their first rodeo. I did actually get I got it completely cleaned up within like a week. <laughs> you know, on all these other horror movies, they're always like, "Oh, we used x x gallons of blood and viscera." On our movie, do you do you know how much you used? I I'm very tempted to lie. <laughs> no, no, I have <laughs> pump no up idea. those numbers. <laughs> yeah, up. yeah, I I have no idea. But we, you know, it was a lot of blood. I can tell you that. It it was difficult to I guess measure because my special effects guy made it, mm -hmm. made his own, uh, makes it out of beet powder. Oh, so it's like vegan friendly. Doesn't taste terrible. Comes out of clothes. 
Honey, that guy's a genius. No, he, uh, he really sold this movie, like, uh, like watching, I'm like, okay, this is good, this is good, this is good, and then, you know, you see something like that head rip and something, like, oh, shit, like, this is... Movie started. <laughs> yeah, like, ah, <laughs> yeah, which, I mean, okay, yeah, a lot of movies... When there's uh, uncomfortable situations between the characters as far as her relationship oh dynamics. <laughs> Not this, again. This makes me uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> so this may, this Wait. the opening part of this movie, before we get to, you know, Blood, Guts, and Mayhem, makes me very uncomfortable. And we we talk about it in the episode. <laughs> it's like are, it's like are are they are they friends? Is that it's like I don't. Is that her son? Is that her, is that her? Yeah. Okay, so you got to settle dispute. Yeah, got, yeah. Who is on the okay. phone with Mama Leeds? Is that her husband or just baby daddy or unrelated person? <laughs> That's me, actually. No, oh, I nice. actually had my voice in there as a placeholder, and I wanted my sound guy to. Uh... <laughs> my sound guy actually shows up in the movie a couple of times. <laughs> He's the guy in the por- the family portrait. Oh, nice. He's like six foot okay. tall, massive. No, that was not her spouse on the phone. It was more more of a concerned family member, more likely. Oh. Yeah. I mean, okay. there's so many more questions, but I don't know if you want to answer them to ruin the mystique no, of the movie. I mean, I, yeah, no, I, I'll i answer what, what I can. All right. So at the okay. beginning, is Sweet Baby Boy a sweet baby boy, or is he already a little devil man child? Nah, he's just a little kid. So when devil man shows up after he has this little fall... Now, yeah, that that is, uh, we'll say, a transformation point. Ooh, interesting. So, uh, did we have two theories on what was happening and how the transformation? So, it was either it was like a changeling situation where Devil mm-hmm. Man swaps his offspring for Chester, and Mommy is just happy to take care of whoever, or it's like some kind of what, like an implant somehow, and it like wiggles into him, and then he like a morphs parasite. into like a parasite. It, sure. is, it is Chester the whole time. It is him. Yeah. Oh, I think Ooh. I was wrong. I was wrong. I do have that a would... very specific answer that is hinted at through the movie as to what is actually going on. You failed this, Ryan. You're in charge Holy of shit, the podcast. One of you guys said it in, in the actual podcast, but I'm not going to point that out specifically. I was just wondering if he was going to think we were fatter than we actually are. <laughs> Wait, I'm huge. What? You heard him. <laughs> My wife watched this with me and she was very vocal at points asking why is that man not helping the woman he's a dick but uh she did want to know what did that old woman eat to make her so strong she can fight with that young man and woman makes me think she is eating human meat uh, oh man i didn't so actually so, i think you know, that's I single that mother strength. strength like yeah no she's just uh mama just bear, mama bear strength i mean she yeah. took those teeth to the face and kept kicking i mean i don't know i don't remember if it was dialogue in this version of the movie but at one point, she talks about how and I think it. I, I think it got cut that people are just easier to catch than animals. So there had been a time where she was catching wildlife to feed him, but it you know it's, it's a hassle. Well, that's a line though. That's <laughs> <laughs> so she basically so Chester gets uh, changed, and then she just has to deal with it because from the what it sounded like what she's saying at the end, like if she's not feeding little devil Chester, then he's going to feed himself and that might not go well right. for the surrounding area. So it's kind of her right. burden. One of those like, eh, maybe she's not so bad, but also it seems like she gets a lot of uh, pleasure out of, uh, maybe she's not so bad. Well, well I mean, look, take. she's saving the community, but it also seems like she's enjoying her work. Chester doesn't like, you gotta meat like what you bones do in his meat. Okay. He doesn't like bones in his meat. Doesn't like bones okay. in his meat. Who, uh, your cast in this, was this all people you personally knew or did you throw out a casting call? No, I didn't know any of them originally. The only person that actually made it, crew included, from the Pine Barrens to the Dirty Jersey jump was Amanda Frost, uh, Margaret. Mm. Mm. March, yeah. She was fantastic. She's such a good actress. But yeah, no, I, I uh, cast it at Casey Donnelly, the guy that plays Fields, was my assistant director's buddy. Mm. But otherwise, okay. yeah, no, I didn't really I didn't really know anybody prior. Oh, cool. I'll say that... Uh... The, the kid playing Chester in that opening scene that where he's running around the house. Oh, that's my nephew. I mean, to be fair. I, oh, okay. I, that is my nephew. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, then you can get him to do anything then. Yeah, such a ball of chaos there. Jump like, off did, this he, lunch. Uh, did he need much uh, directing on being that chaotic, or is he just that much energy all the time? Uh, no, he needed a lot of direction, and he was exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. When he, when he jumps over the phone cord, I my heart stopped, because I'm like, if you hit that cord, you're dead. 
Like, I, <laughs> you, you were dead. Like, you were going, like, mom's going to take the shoe off and beat you with it. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, that gave me a uh, heart attack a little bit. It's terrifying. Yeah, that act, that that mask he was wearing is actually insulated with fur. So he, he was pretty sweaty. <laughs> I, I had to give him a couple of breaks to just, you know, catch his breath. <laughs> That's cool. Well, on his mask and whatnot, a lot of people like to sprinkle in other little projects or something they're working on whatnot. That comic book, is that something that you've done? That, that was made for the movie, but it is a full eight-page comic book. Oh, nice. I, I'd like to put it online at some point. I haven't really decided how I'm going to go about that yet, but I, I want to do more issues of it as well. Yeah, and no, I might have to check that out whenever you ever post it. I'll say it could be something, a fun little thing you throw in like a booklet if you ever get a physical uh, release, which are there any, I know you said you're trying to do Tubi. Are you trying to do any, uh, you know, just quick DVD runs or something? I am. <laughs> I think I'm only going to put it out physically on VHS. Oh, there you Hell go. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I've got at least three v- VCRs. You guys so. appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure not a lot of people will, but yeah, that's that's the idea. No, that'd be cool. God, there's been I've I've seen seen a couple newer things put out on VHS randomly, and I've been. Seeing... I actually have a Terrifier two on VHS. There you go. Which we haven't done those movies yet. I don't know, Ryan Dale. Have you guys seen the Terrifier series yet? Any of them? Nope. Nope. Oh Jesus! I'll get you guys on <laughs> it at guys, some point. You guys uh, thought Dirty Jersey was bad. Yeah, they're. Uh, oh. I've seen scenes from Terrifier 2. I think Art is in like four different films at this point. <laughs> the two different Terrifiers and then two different anthology movies. He, yeah, he did like some short, I think All Hallows All Eve. Eve. And then there was like a, and there was another, another one. There was a, was it was a different actor playing Art in uh, the early I think it was ones. like Ninth Circle or something like it's, that. It's on random. I, that one wasn't as good. All Hallows Eve was pretty good. And then the, the Terrifier movies were uh, gory fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I didn't actually uh, pick that one up on VHS. I should have. But I've definitely seen some, like, like new games put out on, like, old Nintendo cartridges and stuff like that. So, like, I think that's kind of in a little bit. I think mm. So I think you might be surprised the market you uh, you get for something like that. Right. I mean, it's hard to get people to watch it when it's on YouTube. So, <laughs> you uh, know, I don't know. I imagine, like, uh, discoverability is probably a problem. Yeah, a little bit. And it, it's kind of weird because the trailer got... 70,000 more views than the actual movie. <laughs> and I, I looked into, you know, the analytics or whatever. The trailer had gotten recommended to people right after a Knock at the Cabin trailer. So I want to say that's where all that traffic came from. But a lot of people in the comments of the trailer just assumed it was going to streaming or theaters. So I want to say, like, not a lot of people knew where to look for it. Mm-hmm. That's, that, that, that's on me, but... Uh, you know, like, I wasn't going to correct people that were like, oh, I can't wait to see this in theaters. It's like, well, actually, uh, yeah, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, at least they thought yeah, the yeah. quality was up there enough to where, like, hey, this is, you know, a movie with a, a huge budget that's going to be actually released. I mean, because like, like I was saying earlier, when when you're popping on to some of these, you know, YouTube videos and whatnot, they're not always, you know, up to quality, up to standard. And this was... But yeah, discoverability, like that's, it's, it's bittersweet this day and age. We, there's so much content out there and everything. Like there's this new stuff every day from studios, from just talented indie, uh, you know, people like yourself that just getting yourself noticed out here is, it's hard. I mean, that's, that's the whole reason we even have the, the Twitter page is to try yeah. to get, you know, ears on us. It's difficult even when you're making quality stuff, yeah. which is like kind of the sad realization. No, we don't know anything about that, but yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But yeah, it, it it is tough getting anybody to watch it. Unless you're paying for views. <laughs> Unless you're, you know, advertising it. But oh, I didn't really have any money for that by the end of this. <laughs> I, I can imagine uh, two years funding it yourself. Like that's, whew. but I mean, passion project. Oh, yeah. I wish I could have done more more theater showings because uh, the premiere and then I did a showing at, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Colonial. It's, uh, you guys have seen the original Blob? Yes. Yes. It is the theater that he attacks, like when it's coming through the projector or whatever. I actually okay. didn't know it was that theater when I had set the screening up. And that's the movie that got me into horror movies. So like when I found out it was going to play at that theater... And that was like the place. I was pretty excited. Actually, they have different names for their theaters. 
when I was discussing it with the uh, coordinator, I managed to get it in the theater that was called the White Rabbit Theater, <laughs> oh, which is kind of yeah. just like a really weird synchronicity. Okay, talk to me about Octopus Head. How do you know about Octopus Head? Okay, there are two things that IMDb has said. One, it asked me a trivia question. Do you know what Dirty Jersey was called when it was released in Canada? And when I clicked on the link, it wanted me to pay money and, and roll with them. And I'm like, I'll just ask them. It was released in Canada? It's, it's the same question. You don't spend enough time on IMDb. It's the same like <laughs> trivia question on every single movie. It's like, <laughs> what was the name of this movie released in Canada? What was the name of it when it was released in Japan? What was the name of it when it was released in the Philippines? Huh. So if you were releasing it in Canada, what do you think you would have called it? What's the French word for dirty? <laughs> <laughs> he can hook you up with the Chinese word. How do you say dirty jersey in uh, your uh, dialect of Chinese, Ryan? In my dialect, uh, I don't know the word for jersey. It'd be a zang de zi shi <laughs> Kind of like it still sounds like it's dirty. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's a sex act. <laughs> now I don't know that that's true. I could go ask the person who knows, but that's not how we roll. <laughs> yeah, don't bring the creature in. <laughs> I bring her into this. Octopus head is it's just randomly listed up there as something that's in production. Not in production yet, but I am, we'll say uh, pre-production then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a. <laughs> yeah, it, there's you a lot a going on with octopus head. No, there's just a lot going on with it. But I am in the process of rewriting it. Okay. So like uh, script revisions? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, that, that's going to be my first uh, feature film. It, I mean, it, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a guy that gets an octopus on his head. <laughs> now, intentionally... Like, we all got weird fetishes, okay? Like, we all got we weird fetishes. Like, sometimes we go, to, we go to Asian Buffet and you come out of it with an <laughs> octopus on your head. This is... Right, right. It is known. Uh, it know, is known. If, if Dirty Jersey is my vampire movie... Well, then Octopus Head is my zombie movie. Mm, okay. okay. A question I had about Dirty, going back to Dirty Jersey. When you finished with the script before, then like the pre-production phase, did you do any mm. storyboarding? Oh or my God, even quick, dude. Do you have I them? I wish I had. Yeah. One second. Oh, I asked the right question. <laughs> See here. Do I have storyboard? <laughs> you insult him, right? Um... <laughs> I got uh, Ooh. a lot of storyboards. Oh, hell. Words. Yeah, I have a lot of storyboards. I actually, uh, I would like draw these on the notebook and then I would scan them, kind of like edit it on the iPad. Uh huh. So it would kind of turn into like, I had it so that you could kind of just like scroll through it and it would play out in sequence. So uh, before, before we got to shooting every day, I would just kind of walk my DP through the storyboards. Okay. So, so you, it, you knew it, exactly it, what kind of shots you were wanting, what the angles were probably oh, going to yeah. be, and then you took yeah. that, you threw it away, and you just did whatever you wanted. <laughs> uh, no, I was, I was actually very meticulous with planning out the shots. The only the only times I, I really, like, would give up a shot is Brian being like, it's going to take, like, an hour to set up. Do you want to do that? And maybe like, eh, I guess not. It's like, I want to, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I'm tempted, but this is an Airbnb. <laughs> no, the, I only have so much time here. We all know how bad Airbnbs can go sometimes. Barbarian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did do a lot of storyboarding. Excellent. What were your major influences on this particular movie? Oh, man, the 80s. But I uh, specifically the Evil Dead, the original. Mm -hmm. That's what okay. I had in my head yeah. there, yeah. Which... If I, if I recall, uh, we were chatting, and uh, it's after you had listened to a rough cut of the episode we did on it. You said we missed uh, we missed a lot of little, um, I don't know, Easter egg nods to other movies, I think, uh, in Kim's room, if I recall. It's been a while since we had the conversation. Oh, yeah, there's a there's a Necronomicon in Kim's room. Ah. And there's also an <laughs> Evil Dead blanket over top of the shoot. I know I did, I've re like referenced a few other movies, but honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> But yeah, I, I did throw some Evil Dead nods in there. See, now you got to go back again, Ryan. I'll do it. Because I told him when we had that conversation back when, it's like, hey, apparently we, we missed something. And whenever we miss little details, I blame Ryan. He's the detail guy. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, you you missed something. He's like, no, I didn't. It's like, yeah, you did. <laughs> and now that, now that we know it's a full-on Necronomicon, yeah, he's a failure. He will be shamed later. I'll give him a dirty jersey. <laughs> you promise? <laughs> I'll open my mouth really wide. <laughs> I'll get the I'll get the jar of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely got OG uh, Evil Dead vibes from this. Well, just uh, Raimi vibes in general. I mean, with the 
a bit of the humor with the you know the the violence and gore. I mean, come on, that that kick on little Chester, like <laughs> yeah, glorious. it's good. That was that might <laughs> only been. only one missed opportunity. I would have liked it if his, the head had flown off. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. If you just kick the head clean <laughs> off the shoulders. <laughs> It's funny, actually, I, uh, movie. I left a few kind of like, I wouldn't leave like a boom showing or anything, but okay. if you watch that head kick bit, that's a that's an animatronic head we did to do the blinking. Oh, you can see the stand pop up in the frame. That it's like it's like on a on a little wooden stand. Oh, cool. Nice. Which if I recall, Ryan, I think Dale, you both liked it whenever uh, Ma was uh, slapping Marge and the white flashes. Oh, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that before in a movie. Really? Well, it's funny. As soon as I re-listened to the episode, I was watching. What was I watching last night? It might have been like an episode of Tacoma FD, I think. And what the fuck is that? What is that? It's a television. Nobody comedy knows by, what that it's is. It's by the Broken Lizard. A couple of the Broken Lizard guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, okay. uh, Super Troopers. You know, Slam and Salmon, all that jazz. And they actually did okay. the same thing, and I'm like, huh. So I think it's one of those things that now that you guys pointed it out in Dirty Jersey, it's, I'm going to see it everywhere. It's like, you know, yeah. you don't see a particular car around until you buy that car, and then everyone and their mom has that car, and it's like, oh, dang. I imagine it's probably super useful in the indie playbook because it costs nothing, and it was really effective. Uh, it's it's jarring. I actually um, <laughs> fought with my assistant director about keeping it for a long time, and me winning the argument was when I sat down with my special effects guy to watch a rough cut and his exact reaction to the slaps were, Oh, hey. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's jarring. It kind of, it, it, it catches you off guard. It's pretty nice. I like that. Slaps the shit out of her. Yeah. <laughs> that whole fight scene. It's like clumsy in a really believable way. Right on. And yes, it's not, it, I've always I'm sure it was a... choreographed, but it doesn't feel like overly choreographed. Yeah, I actually have a video of them stumbling around in my in my parents' house living room, <laughs> uh, like kind of walking through. It was it was actually kind of difficult to figure out just because we couldn't get in that location early, so we had to practice in like a different oh, room. Okay. The layouts different, all that jazz. So there was like a little bit of improv that happened. Actually, there were a couple of times. And you can hear it in the in the takes that are uncut. One of the punches, I think the punch that I used in in the actual cut, right after she hits her, I ran in. So I was watching outside on a monitor. I ran into the cabin. I was like, did you actually hit her? <laughs> so that's how I knew it looked good. <laughs> I, I was like, did you? <laughs> Gosh. Uh, no, I, actually, nobody Yeah, that actually, was her real teeth, Kenny. That's our real teeth. Uh, look, hey, you got to ask this day and age after that whole Mia Goth, Maxine thing that we've been hearing about lately. Allegedly. 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 Allegedly kicked that extra. In I'd the let her kick me in the head. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I don't even need to be an extra. Just <laughs> what do you need? If, uh, if What do you need? If Shia LaBeouf needs to kick me too to make that happen, I'll let him kick me too. <laughs> uh, Look, they're a married couple. You got it. You take one, you take the other. It's fine. Take take the good with the bad. All right. We just talk about holes. The movie holes. They ever not... released that footage <laughs> of the kick. I'm telling you, you put that on the green screen, green screen behind Shia saying, just do it. Just do it. And that's gold. <laughs> uh, what an odd couple. Uh, oh, man. The fight, the fight. Yeah. So how much of that was like pre-choreographed and how much of that was just improvisation? I mean, <laughs> he just I, answered that. No, he said, he, said, he said there was some improvisation, but like, did you like, like set up as like a, a fight coordinator and actually, he wants to ask about the phone. Oh, I want to ask about the phone. <laughs> oh, okay. you, you were also the fight coordinator? Yeah. So you set that up. So like, it's like, okay, so I, I know at some point I want you to get hit in the face with a jar of teeth. I know. <laughs> like, so how much of that did you actually lay out for them? Or is it mostly like, okay, I need you to end up here. And okay, now you need to end up back over here. Or is it just... Uh, I, was, I was fairly specific with what I wanted them to do. And I let them, like, play around with that after I, you know, gave them direction. But, like, uh, some of the items they use, like the lamp uh, with the hammer that, like, split in half just kind of happened. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. nice, oh. nice. Production um, value, great. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So stuff <laughs> like that uh, and just, like, kind of what they were using kind of messed around with a little bit. But for the most part, it, it was pretty meticulously planned. I think it would have to be. But I, I don't know. That was more of an in-general question on how those kind of work. And I'm sure they're different overall, depending on the movie. Like, if you're doing, like, a coordinated 
martial arts scene versus a uh, knockout drag out brawl. Was Margaret going? Hey, hey. Yeah. Was Margaret going? Just, just to, uh... funny. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah. It's a really funny side bit. My my uh, actress Kathleen Samard gave me shit at the premiere because I actually had her full wardrobe for that day in my size with a blonde wig in case she didn't want to do <laughs> any of it. I could hop in and uh huh. Uh huh. You're like, mm-hmm. you're like Kathleen. I she got the wig. If you down. really don't want to, I, I mean, it's my size. <laughs> I I'm, guess my size. I'll, I'll have to do it. it. <laughs> Look, sure, they'll never see the underwear, but if for accuracy for me to do the part, I'm wearing it. <laughs> well, you got to get in character, Kenny. Got to get in character. He's a professional. He's a professional. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Now hit me with this jar of teeth. That's great. Did they did they at least let you try it on and wear it all with the wig? No, no, I never ended up. Oh man! Up, uh, oh, that getting all motherly and stuff. That would have been a great uh, <laughs> blooper. <laughs> I think we had some debate about this. Was Margaret's gift? Was she going to be able to keep the quad bike? Was, was that hers, or was it just the ride? Was her birthday gift? No, he bought he bought her a quad. See, there. That's a great gift. Yeah, it's a perfect but, gift. Like, it, it's a would you get a quad for somebody that's never ridden a quad before i'm selling that shit if i get gifted it for, probably <laughs> nah just because i'm like i'm i play it safe with gifts i'm like something like for christmas i'll ask my yeah, yeah. my missus i'm like what do you want like i'll buy you like a random thing here or there that doesn't cost that much just because i think you might like it but anything i'm spending real money on you're gonna pay. Yeah, but how do you think how do you think it would go if on her birthday you were like i bought you a quad <laughs> And we're gonna go quadding today. Well, and I got you a lot of chips. Yeah, a lot of chips. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> chip, else funny. chip lunch, I actually, chip dinner. I actually uh, had a voiceover line I wanted to record as they were driving away, where he goes, "I stole all that." So it's <laughs> funny that you pointed that out. You mentioned he stole all that. So my idea for the sequel is the gas station attendant. Now that you say stole it, either his credit card didn't work or whatever, he didn't have time to run out. So he hooks up with Kim, the friend who chain smoking, and they go like buddy cop have to go investigate. Well, the sequel, you know, uh, if I were to do a sequel, Marge does have a brother, she mentions. Mm. So put that out there. Oh, and he just so happens to be a monster hunter. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, Friday. a cryptid investigator daniel <laughs> it's a friday the yeah, 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 remake yeah. Situ- situation where her brother's right. uh, okay you know shows up looking for her right 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 and then dirty jersey's now a ninja when you uh <laughs> when you get gas you give them the card if you're gonna pay for card before you get the gas or whatever prepay but, uh, okay. if, you're, if you're paying with cash you pay after the transaction huh say this so they'll, they'll fill your car up and then ask you for the 20 I mean, hypothetically, you could just drive away. Full service stations are around here kind of odd. For one, they charge you extra. Really? Yeah, because I mean, it's not a it's not a standard feature. So if you want someone else to pump your gas, you roll over to the side where they have the little you know bell thing that you roll over, and then someone runs out and pumps it. But it's like last I looked, it's like five cents extra on the gallon. Uh, Daniel, there's still one uh, like nearby the house there. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just down from the post office, hmm. they have a full service side. But I mean. Full service, I don't think is even what it used to be. It was uh, what it used to be. They fill your tank, check your oil, clean Talk your wipers. Talk to us, Grandpa. What did it used to be? Yeah, yeah. Back in my day, yeah, uh-huh. when you can get a dirty jersey for what a do nickel. What you remember? <laughs> Whole nickel. They, that nickel was made of wood. That nickel was made of wood. Might have been they a little feed your horse back then. <laughs> That's right. Do a dirty jersey on the horse, and I'm the bad guy. And... You didn't answer his question, Kenny. You get Cam a, uh, you know. Little four wheeler, go vroom vroom, vroomy vroom vroom. I think she'd potentially be down for it, but you know that's why I got her. She's down for things, right? But if that's not anything that they would have any interest in, like I'm not gonna go. I don't know. I'm not gonna buy her any of this like horror stuff I have behind me. She's gonna have no use for it. I'm not gonna. She she spooks easy. Like I'm not gonna go buy her something that's solely my interest. That's that's insane. Which is I think we even talked about it a couple times. Is like. I make fun of like, man, he really strikes out with his girlfriend a lot. So much. This one day is it's just a, not a good day. And like, it's like, I'm from a, a relatively small town. So I was like, hmm, maybe he's the only other guy in town around her age. Maybe that's where the... No, there's Seth. There's Seth. Well, <laughs> there is... What's wrong with well, Seth? I like to think, I think Seth's a little bit older than them. Now, uh, I know okay. there were some questions about whether they were in high school or not. They're all college age. Mm. 
No, that wasn't the question. The question was, when were Seth and Nathan going to hook up? That was the question. That's... Because <laughs> oh, that, strong... that was a conversation we had. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. That, 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 I we, am dancing. Yeah, baby. <laughs> we were definitely joking around about that. We are down for it. Yeah, Kim, Kim was going to be gay, too. That, that was awesome. But... Yeah, so yeah. you guys were spot on. I'm sorry, going to be? She had strong... Let me teach you how to really have a birthday party, Marge. Okay, you don't need these a boys man. don't know how to do it. You don't need a man for a you dirty jersey. You don't need a jersey. man. We've you need a man. You need someone to read you poetry, rub your feet. I can buy myself flowers. <laughs> yeah, but that was a conversation we had that that they would all be better off with their buddies it's, it's, versus with their, uh, their actual 100%. partners. Hundred percent. It definitely seemed that way. The, uh, I think that's the case in like every horror movie we watch. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, the boys did stick up for each other pretty quick. Like, in the end there, whenever he turns on Marge, it's like, you killed Seth. Like, okay, hold on. I didn't plan this party. <laughs> right, right. It's because right. you had a birthday. But it is her birthday. It is her birthday. It's your bir- you had to have a birthday. You had, this is why you don't drink when you have a concussion. Now, we touted, spouted a lot of medical stuff on this. We're not doctors. Let's let that be clear. You, It may be beneficial to drink after a concussion. I don't know. If you have a concussion, go see a doctor. Or ask David here, because, you know. Yeah, you're definitely not supposed to drink after you have a concussion. There we go. There you go. Have you ever had a concussion, Daniel? David? No. I don't think I have either. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> uh-huh. Kenny, you played football anyway. for 20 years. <laughs> okay, that devil man suit, though. Like, obviously, like, you don't give us, like, a up-close, like, in-detail shot of it. Like, how wicked is that thing up-close? Like, are those... When they spread their arms, are those wings automatically, like, ah! shoot out? Like, is there a mechanism on them? Because, I mean, I've seen some... Oh, yeah, they were, they were, they were rigged up to, to open up. It was actually PVC pipes. Oh, nice. Sure. Yeah, yeah, Rich is a genius, and, you know, I, I would just be like, can, can you make wings? I'd be like, how big? I'd be like, ah, pretty big. Big like, ones? You've seen Jeepers <laughs> Creepers, right? Uh, there you go. <laughs> that, yeah. and, and then, like, I don't know, a couple of weeks later, he would send me, like, the pipes opening up without the mm. skin on them or whatever. But, yeah, he would he would bust stuff out real quick. I did kind of think about the the creeper on that shot, but I didn't want to necessarily associate. It was inspired, yeah. Okay, okay. Because nobody wants to be attached gun, to Victor actually, Salva. Too. Yeah, no, fuck that guy. But, but, yeah. I'm not going to say Jeepers Creepers and Jeepers Creepers 2 are great movies. Oh, they are phenomenal. Yeah. One has Licking of Glass. Well, that's the second one, and that's uh, that gets a little weird when you think about it, but it's still good. The third one, absolutely horrible, and I, I haven't brought myself to watch the fourth one. I haven't watched either of those ones. Oh, it's bad. It is so bad. I, yeah. I, I, well, I heard they were going to do that Western one way back in the day, and I really love that idea. Oh, that would have been good. Oh, sure. And, you know, they didn't go with that, so I was like, I'm out. Well, we need more horror franchi- franchises to have sequels that are like, time period pieces because prey turned out really good and that that is a top tier predator movie now yeah they can do a lot with that i hope they do i I want to see one in feudal japan i want to see one in like world war ii yeah yeah yeah. i I remember them mentioning one about japan so i think that was their their thoughts on it now that it's award winning i mean who knows maybe they maybe they will you know i wish they would put that out in theaters oh i'm so we finally got a physical release on it It was still just on hulu thankfully at least got that but that would have been a great movie it's crazy barbarian still hasn't had it yes no that's that that's nuts because that movie that might have was that was would you say that was our favorite movie of uh that year a horror movie i think it's our favorite movie period right it it was good it's either that or Hereditary. Well, Her- so Barbarian doesn't make me feel as sad. Hereditary didn't come out that year. You just seen it that year. I can't remember. Okay, <laughs> I'm old. What do you want? Yeah, yeah, I don't know how you missed uh, Hereditary. Yeah, no, Barbarian, that movie. Whew. Man, w- WKUK. <laughs> <laughs> did you, um, oh, man. Did you get this uh, into any film festivals or anything like that? Like, I don't know if, if there's a lot up there. <laughs> no, I didn't even try to be honest with you. See, the thing about... Dirty Jersey is it's a really weird length for festivals. Typically, they want something really short between five and ten minutes or a feature. Feature. And me being like, I want to say the 40, 50 minute mark is where it becomes like feature territory. Yeah. And I had a lot of people on the crew pushing me to to make it feature length. But it was like, if you break it down, it was about $10,000 every 10 minutes. So I'm like, yeah, if you got another $20,000. <laughs> you paying now, for it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will gladly make this a feature. The thing is, I wanted people to see Dirty Jersey, and, it, it, you know, it's a short, to watch it and be like, what the hell is this guy going to do when he does a feature? Right. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. Well, that's what we talked about a yeah, little I, bit. Yeah, I had somebody say to one of my crew, like, people don't usually put this much effort into, like, a short film. And I was like, I, I mean, no, but... If you're going to do the thing, do the thing. Yeah, I was like, if right, you're going to put exactly. it out there, like, yeah, yeah make, it, make it work. So how do you measure the success of this short? Is it just, like, I wanted to do the thing, I did the thing, the thing is awesome, or is it, like, I did the thing and now someone somewhere has seen the thing and that's opening up avenues for me to pursue in the future? Well, that, that's the hope and the dream, but it's really hard to be a director and know that you can direct and not have anything to point to that's right. like really good. So this, this is that for me. It's like high, resume it, work. A high portfolio, quality right, portfolio right. builder. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not why I made it. I made it to make a movie and because I just love horror movies. It shows. The, the measure of success really, like, I mean, honestly, just having, having the showing doing a premiere and having mm-hmm. I, I had a hundred people at, at both shows and to watch it just like with a crowd watching dirty jersey with a crowd is a lot of fun i bet that, yeah because it upset them pretty bad nice <laughs> i mean it's got a lot of nice like big moments where like i were watching it with you know just you know my kim reactions like ah and then the one person jumps everyone else is getting into it like if someone's watching it with ryan they're probably gonna catch an elbow yeah, because he goes all noodle arms. So <laughs> that's got to be very satisfying. I mean, anytime we get any sort of feedback on the show, it doesn't matter how many people we have listening. Every single that's little a bit win. of feedback, like even if it was negative, <laughs> I'm just like, you guys showed up. You listened to the thing. You did the yeah. thing. Like that's great. it's so satisfying. The uh, the thing that was really cool, you know, comedian kind of measures the audience by like the laughter, but I'm looking for any reactions kind of the same thing you were saying like whether they say it sucks or whatever like somebody gasping or being like oh my god that's just as good as a laugh for me oh yeah it's satisfying just to affect people any which way i i agree completely any sort of a response you elicit i mean that's like me being uncomfortable with the social drama of people on there like <laughs> god yeah it makes me so feel so yeah i cringe but it's I like it's, nerve, it's, yeah. yeah but it's like it's great like that's what i we, you know, like uh, Nicole Kidman tells us, we go to these places for experiences. <laughs> Dude, that is my pledge of allegiance. Right. You stand up and the movie. I, I stand and salute every time. <laughs> it's so corny, but it's so great. Oh, they, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real upset when they pull that. Oh, that, That's got to run forever. There's, It'll be out there for a while, I'm sure. People love that thing. Now, Daniel's saying uh, kind of was essentially what I was trying to remember what I was saying. Yeah, we we see all those little horror shorts that are, you know, like I said, 10, 15 minutes long that get thrown on YouTube. And then all of a sudden, someone like Sam Raimi rolls by and be like, hey, like, I'll throw some money behind that if you want to make it a feature, like Lights Out. Right. You know. I, I mean, but I wasn't Lights Out only like a minute. Yeah, it was like, it was two minutes. super short. It was a short short. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Dirty Jersey is a short, but it's complete. It's yeah, it's a it's full, like right. a complete idea. Right, it just doesn't fall. It's just a movie with all the with all the uh, fat cut out. Yeah, yeah, it's all the bullshit that we would have like went and got up to go pee and come back. That's all been cut. Which... Right, I like. I, it's just you know a lightning fast pace, but I I don't like to consider it a short film. Truth truth be told, it's more just like a mid length movie. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, it's it just barely misses that feature mark, which is arbitrary if you think about it but right. I, it's i think we even said it in the in the pod there is it was refreshing to finally watch something that didn't take two two and a half three hours of our time because it seems like everything a lot of things these <laughs> and days turned out are it just, sucked it's just bloated well like yeah. i think about like we we might oh, have i had, know i'm thinking of one we might have Outwaters enjoyed was four Outwaters. hours long <laughs> it was, felt like it was eight, hours. Was eight days <laughs> we, we don't know how you feel about the outwaters david we did not he might have it. liked it and he can explain what's good about it because there is good things about it. That's why it could have been. Problem. That could have been. 10 I minutes. just wish we could have seen them. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a huge Outwaters guy. I do. Uh, that that dude is also from New Jersey. Oh, is he? The okay. It's like so I'm not gonna. You know. Oh, I mean, but, but uh, no. We love that he I, made the thing. Like people love it, and it's great that we don't. Because it gets all this discourse. It's the same thing. Like I haven't pulled the trigger on Skinnamarink yet, but that gets the kind of the you same. You know, I will say I like Skinnamarink a lot more than the Outwaters. I'd rather stare at a wall, I guess, than nothing. But <laughs> Skinnamarink definitely makes you feel like you're a little kid and you woke up from a nightmare and you got to go to your parents' room, but you got to get through the dark hallway first. 
That's the best way I can describe it. Oh, see, well, nice. I, I, I've been holding off okay. on that one because those two were kind of like in the same. No, no, I haven't no. have pulled the trigger yet. I think we're going to do it season two here, but we just need to get some space between any association with the Outwaters for us because that was. Uh, <laughs> Like, actually, did you guys do an episode on the Outwaters yet? That was our we, first we one did. we did in person because Ryan was back First and China. only one we did in person so far. The, the house had no AC, so there's a no bunch AC. of loud ass fans blaring. There was a fan running. I had a dog. There's various at my feet. animals Solid running dog. around. We were randomly in did their you brother's guys have house. The subtitles on? I don't recall. Yes. Did, we? did we? We did. For, yeah, for the Outwaters, that's the, only way the we... subtitles are super specific. It's the only way we could oh, tell wait, what yeah, was we... happening because oh, some of the dialogue. Couldn't yeah, we did. As we did. Yeah, it was something off with it, right? Yeah. yeah. If, I, if I recall, I left the room for a little bit, and you guys didn't even notice. Yeah. Oh uh, no, I've hated you ever since. We've <laughs> talked about the, the the effects. Let's talk about the music. All right, on. Yeah. So, how do you pronounce it? Snvik oil. Snake oil. Just snake oil. Okay. <laughs> <You> <laughs> idiot. <laughs> hey. Okay. It's S N V K E O I L. You pronounce it's obviously it. snake oil. I actually no. I actually didn't put that together until the guy like said it to me in person. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> I mean, like I had written it down and I didn't. It went over my head. Uh, how did you? Uh, what's his? Is his name Jessup? Jesse. What's up, Jesse? He's actually the host of. I don't know if you guys have heard of Say You Love Satan. Podcast, they are another horror podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. He he did a really great job. He's actually got a band too called Corpse Master. Their song was used, I think, the second time you go into the garage. It's like a metal song about the Evil Dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, when I rewatched Dirty Jersey last night, I forgot how much that uh, track that comes on at the credits there slaps, like right off the bat. I was like, and but it seems almost like a modified Halloween John Carpenter theme, and then just stuff laid on top of it. That was the vibes I was getting from it. And I was like, yeah, that, that was that was what I gave the reference, I guess you could say. That was like the inspiration. No, nah, because that's definitely the vibes I was getting. I was like, I was just listening. I was like, hmm, OK, this sounds familiar. But yeah, more. Which yeah, I mean, it was like 80 cent with some layered yeah. complexity. over it. It was, I'm like, mm-hmm. OK, yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Like you can't go wrong with John Carpenter as your music reference. I mean, that's right. You know, the goat. What did we fuck up when we talked about your baby in our episode? <laughs> Do you recall? <laughs> Uh, how, how did we besmirch you? Anything you want to get off your chest about us? I don't think so. No, yes. I, I, I was I was pretty happy with the with the reaction of you guys watching it. I mean, you got obviously your horror buffs, so it's cool. I, like I made this movie for you guys. I made it for people like me, the people that just really love horror. No, it it shows. Like I said, it's uh, the Evil Dead reference, like the vibe that it gave off. Oh, the, the, uh, the... There, there was another reference. Suck my nose till your head caves in is from Monster Squad. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Devil Man has nards. <laughs> Daniel, you're familiar with Monster Squad? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. You d- didn't see a reaction there. Sometimes, Some- sometimes have to, you haven't seen know. what we think you've seen. That's fair. There are gaps. So, okay, so you're working on this next project. I guess we'll see it in, what, another four years? Or is this one going to be faster than Dirty uh, Six God, years, Kitty. Not. Six years. Um, six, oh, sorry, six years. God, no, no. That's going to be... <laughs> Hopefully, I mean, I learned a lot, you know, going through this this process. Yeah, hopefully this one goes a lot faster. <laughs> but uh, I am going to try and do, uh, you know, a lot more crazy things. So, you know, it, it'll probably take a while. <laughs> David, have you ever seen the uh, Feast movies? No. Mm-mm. You should check out the first Feast movie. I could like, I was just thinking about like the the chaotic energy of that movie. And the, Is it newer the creature, or older? it's a little bit older. Uh, Ryan, what, when would you say Feast. Feast came out? You know that old show, Project Greenlight, that uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck did, where they would. Uh... Is the cover? Is the cover like uh, the monster with the weird teeth? Yes. 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 I've seen. And I've seen woman's the, face I've seen at the cover, it. Yeah. You should check that out. I could definitely see like that style, like maybe fitting, like with yours. Like if you, were, like I was picturing, like if you had made a full length like horror creature movie, I could see that being a uh, David Keen, PG Keen style uh production there i don't know why that just popped in my head i was just thinking about it yeah no uh if this was your first one big one on your own where you're learning to go along i mean the quality is already there i i think you got it dude i will turn up for you know the next one so there's three more, yeah. there's at least yeah. three more watches there right on right on yeah i uh i did a a film before dirty jersey that was six minutes long called it came from the backyard that's also on youtube if you guys are interested oh, but uh definitely not as good <laughs> but uh you know you can see the the progression 
Yeah, my biggest regret of the whole movie is that Brian never brought zoom lenses like I wanted. I wanted to do those hard zooms. A whole. Yeah, Ooh, I really okay. would have gone Sam Raimi with it. But what do you think of the new uh, Evil Dead movie? I loved it. I actually um, got through Fangoria. I ended up at a, a like a pre-screening of it in New York. Oh, nice! So that was pretty freaking cool. Did you get one of the little goodie bags that had the miniature cheese grater in it and the? Uh, sour no, no, I was what? mad. I saw that afterwards. Oh. So I was like, oh, you didn't get that shit? <laughs> I would <laughs> burn it down. Yeah, I've seen all those. That looked great. What's your favorite scary movie? My favorite scary movie? That's a really hard question. It is. I hate when I get asked that because I got no real answer. There's too many choices. Uh, dude, I feel the same way. And I don't I, like. I don't want to say Evil Dead. I mean, I wouldn't it's knock it. Blob. But you're going to. OG Blob? The 80s Blob. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, let's go with the 80s Blob. Are you comfortable with them making it again? Because that's, that's happening. I wanted to do it. You wanted to do it? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do it. <laughs> write, write them out. I don't like I, I want you to do it. The director they have doing it? Oh, God, it's someone, um, let me see, it's someone who's attached to something else that I really like. It's not the, it's not the guy that did Exorcist Believer, is it? No, no, it's not David Gordon Green, which he exited oh. that. I wanted to like that so much just because I want more, but, uh, that did not hit for us. No. Not at all. Oh, it's, um, the guy who did the Hellraiser remake. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, and that I might did, be good. I, I did like the Hellraiser remake. I appreciated what it tried to do, but I didn't love it. David Bruckner. That one hit really well for us overall. I mean, it, it's definitely something that I think they could launch more Hellraisers off of again, because that franchise kind of dwindled down, especially when they yeah. you know, started replacing uh, the priest. And uh, I really like the new Pinhead. No, uh, uh, phenomenal Jamie job. Clayton. Yeah, very good. Yeah, ben, like, phenomenal job. Easily, easily the best one since... Wonder. Yeah, people were mad about that, but then like you you read the Clive Barker book, and Clive Barker is so gay. Is so uh, oh, gay. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So like, obviously yeah. they don't even know what they're talking about. But like Pinhead is androgynous <laughs> in the books. Androgynous AF. Like yeah, there are pigeon so, heads. There are semen. Cool. It's great. <laughs> it's true, Kenny. This is true. I'm not talking about my apartment. I'm talking about the book. Okay. Did you guys have any other questions about the movie that you can think of? Really there have would have been, down. I will say, there would have been, there would have been more Devil Man had the movie gone on. That would have been the third act, more or less. Yeah, because at one point, I think Ryan and Daniel mentioned, one of them mentioned in the pod, like they thought maybe even the mom was already the Devil Man. But when you mentioned that Chester got kind of changed, and that kind of answered that question, that obviously mm. he wasn't uh, changed by his own mother. But that would have been an interesting. Did we? Take. Did we already ask if there was anything you wanted to do but couldn't? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Specific examples I don't know about. More explosions. Um, more more Godzilla, yes. yeah. More. Definitely I wanted a lot more blood for certain <laughs> things. Yeah, sure, I sure, did want sure. more blood. But like then I got uh you know, after the movie came out, people were like, There was that was like the perfect amount of blood. It wasn't too much it was like realistic and it made it more uncomfortable. Which I so, I love to hear. Yeah, I mean the the scene where she drops It's for you and it's just like <laughs> the right because you could have gone like full schlock, you know, pop a balloon under her head and it just goes every like Sam Raimi style, right? But you you didn't. It's like restraint. It's just like ah, it's oh like, yeah, that looks like yeah. it hurt. I, I, you know, if I could have done something, I would have had like a little bit of brains come out or something like that. At least like a little mush. I had to pause. We would have screamed even that. more. I, I had to take a second because I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> That's it's so good. It's for you. It's, it's like, so yes, good. Yes. Yeah. I, one of my favorite. One of my favorite reactions at the screening. Right after that line, I heard somebody under their breath go, "That's a great line." <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. So, yeah, that was my. Yeah, it had to have that like one liner. You know. Well, obviously, since you're running the whole show, you could have probably walked off with anything you wanted. But uh, what are some fun things that you kept? From the shooting, like, do you have, like, the pulled apart head just sitting around somewhere, or the devil man um, wings? That is, the the head is in my uh, special effects guy's basement. I have uh, the white rabbit action figure I kept. I don't know what else I have. Uh, I know I have other stuff around, but, like, a lot of the costumes and stuff kind of got trashed, or, like, bloody. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I got a couple of, like, props. I got some of the old clothes. I got the uh, deer head. From the cabin. <laughs> nice. I found that on yes. Facebook Marketplace, actually. <laughs> oh, God, Facebook Marketplace. The shit you can find. <laughs> uh, any uh, final questions for David? What do you bench? I'm sure, I'll think of like 30 when we're done. But... <laughs> yeah, that's how it always goes. What do I bench? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what do you bench? <laughs> what do you bench? <laughs> you lift, bro? 
Do you lift, bro? You even lift? <laughs> I don't. I, I, I don't. <laughs> uh, like 145. I mean, not not a lot. Is that good? That's uh, that's uh, that's your body it's weight, like buddy. Like 245 plates, I think. And then the the bar itself was 45 pounds. That's too much for me, probably. I got little noodle arms. Yeah, that's that that's about what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave that pause and that one's good. Uh, <laughs> we finally got to the heart of the thing. We finally asked the questions you guys wanted the answers to. Where Devil Man uh, and what do you bench? How much does Devil Man bench? How much does Devil Man bench is that whole train yard? Easy over. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. Oh. I actually knew a guy that could bench five hundred pounds, like a, a real actual person. So probably more than that. Oh, I'd cool. I'd turn into dust. That's that's not for me. Who's a monster? Oh shit. Now we know where the money for Dirty Jersey came from. And that's why we haven't seen David below the waist, because his knees are gone. Did not pay any of that back. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that. I uh, It's super snowy outside, and I fucking fell on my knee so hard <laughs> last night. <laughs> I've been limping around the apartment. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, this snow got us all. I, it's snowy out here, too. Oh, gosh. Okay, your last chance. Anything for David or David? Last chance if you want to say anything to us. Insult us. Whatever you got to do. Everyone get it off your chest. Where can people find him? Where can people find me? Dirty Jersey. Dirty Jersey. <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Go. Instagram at uh, Peachy King Productions. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm not going to call it X. Same. Dirty underscore Jersey underscore movie. IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> can we edit that, you think? I'll edit his IMDb. Yeah. He probably could, honestly. Put this We're as one of his appearances. His wiki after this. Yeah. yeah. yeah this is all... my first interview, guys. Our first guest. Oh. This was fun. I mean, if we can find another excuse to get you back on here. Yeah, hopefully it's Octopus Head. Oh, well, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm always happy to hop on here. You guys are great. Sure. Hey, maybe if we finally get the balls to cover something as big as Evil Dead or uh, actually, you know, the Blob remake. Maybe we'll uh, give, you a, give you a call. Oh, shit. I, I would definitely hop on for that. That's a good one. All right. Write that down, Ryan. We get David back on. Write that down. <laughs> we get David back on for the Blob <laughs> remake, which is a, a damn good time. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I actually just found out the the bit where that guy gets completely covered and like his face is melting and shit. There's a miniature shot like right after that. It goes to miniatures. Really? Also, the phone booth when it gets like slammed in with the blob. That's also miniatures. It's <sighs> so seamless. It's that's amazing. Miniatures mm -hmm. are so good. Ah, oh, dude, incredible. Movie magic. Movie magic, baby. Well, as always, I've been your horrible host slash interviewer, Kenny, saying still, we're a devil man. I've been Daniel. I've been Ryan with my mouth open, waiting for you to do the dirty jersey. <laughs> and uh, I've been a horrible guest. Hey! 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 He said the name of our podcast. <laughs> he said the thing. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I actually was gonna write in the chat, I made a horrible mistake. <laughs> 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 that happens to the best of us. <laughs>